Hi everyone, my name is Alyssa Glixman and I'd like to thank you for joining me today to learn a little about Greek life at Binghamton University. I hope everyone's staying inside, everyone's staying safe, everyone's staying healthy. And before we begin, I'd like to tell you a little about myself. Currently, I'm an admissions assistant in the undergraduate admissions office. Prior to this, I graduated from Binghamton with a major in human development and a double minor in education and health and wellness studies this past December. During my time at Binghamton, I was involved in Greek life and it was a major reason as to why I loved Binghamton so much and had the experience that I did have. I've grown so much through as a person and met so many new people through being in a sorority. And I do know, as cliche as this does sound, the friendships that I've made in Greek life are definitely ones that I will have for life. I'm so excited to share my experiences with you today and help you learn a little more about Greek life and what it can do for you. And with me today, we have Byron. Hello, folks. So my name is Byron Gittens. Um, I'm a senior assistant director here at Binghamton University. So I do work in the admissions office. Um, part of my role today is to answer any questions as Alyssa's talking. There will be a, a question and answer. Um, I'm a regional, so I'm not based in uh, New York State. I am from Queens, so I went to high school in New York City and found out about what fraternity life was like on my own, and I'll talk a little bit about that later on. But um, I'm definitely here to assist in any questions or answers. Some of you folks may have questions about admissions for those admitted students or for students who um, are prospects thinking about Binghamton. And I'll touch base on some of the things you should be doing at this time, kind of towards the end. Okay, so um, we hope you enjoy this. Okay, Alyssa, go ahead, take it away. So Binghamton Greek Life prides itself on five different values. The first one is unity. Binghamton Greek Life is not a very large community. However, the people in it are very devoted to Greek life and band together in times of need. Everyone's there to support one another. Everyone stand, really does stand together and Greek Life is a very cohesive community. The second one is respect. People involved in Greek life know that they have a responsibility to put forward an image that is respected. They want to be respected on the university's community because they know that they are giving an image of a national organization. And they also have to show the national organization a good representation of Binghamton. And they know the level of respect and the level of responsibility that comes with this power. Thirdly, we have scholarship. So Binghamton students as a whole, Greek life or not, take their schoolwork extremely seriously. You'll always find people in the library, you'll always find people studying, and Greek life is no different than this. Students in Greek life, although I wasn't aware of this when I joined, tend to have a higher GPA than students who are not involved in Greek life, which is something I found very interesting. Students in Greek life tend to work together on projects within their majors, study together for tests. There have been people in other fraternities who have tutored people within my sorority. People work together on study guides, study groups. Everyone really does work together in order to take school seriously. The fourth value is service. So this has to do with giving back to your organization, giving back to the Binghamton campus, and giving back to the Binghamton community. A lot of this comes from philanthropy events. Each organization has a national philanthropy and hosts events throughout the year in order to raise money for their philanthropy. This could be through getting money, having Venmo donations. This could be through an event on campus. I know my sorority, for example, does a beauty pageant for all the fraternities on campus. We do a basketball tournament for all the fraternities on campus, and we do a cake eating competition that does get very fun. Some other examples of fraternity, fraternity and sorority philanthropy events are Minute to Win It, um, karaoke, they will have Blaze and Chipotle fundraisers, and everyone does get really involved with philanthropy. The fifth value is leadership. Students in Greek life tend to get very involved in, in leadership. They will have positions within their organizations, whether it be on the executive board, whether it be on the general board. 
they will have positions within their governing council, and some they'll also have positions with in organizations that aren't necessarily Greek life. For example, I know that Chabad, which is a hub for Greek life on campus, has a special e-board position that's the Greek liaison. So it's someone involved in Greek life and involved in Chabad that has to do deal with coordinating and making sure people in Greek life who want to be involved in Jewish life have the opportunities to get involved there. So Binghamton, as you may or may not know, is a mid-sized university with about 14,000 undergraduate students. Of these 14,000, only 8% are involved in Greek life. However, this number is growing. But with that said, it doesn't mean that you will not have a social life or that it, you will be at a disadvantage if you choose not to get involved in Greek life. Being that it is so small, it is a nice way for everyone within Greek life to get to know each other and form bonds that they will carry through their entire college career. Binghamton Greek life is also growing really fast. Within my time in Greek life, I have seen two or three new fraternities come to campus as well as one sorority. And the process of this was really cool to watch because they have students from each chapter go to a meeting and meet with different nationals organizations and they kind of pitch to the students why they think their group would do well on campus and then the students kind of get to choose which organization will come based on if they think it will do well and if they can see other students being a part of this and the size of the chapters are also different which depends on the governing councils so to explain a little more what a governing council is, we have seven here at Binghamton. This is just the overarching council that oversees the fraternity or the sorority. So we have seven different ones, as I mentioned. Some of our fraternities are cultural, some are social, and some are professional. This presentation will focus mostly on the two social governing councils, which is IFC, which is the Interfraternity Council, and PANHEL, which is the sororities. So IFC is made up of 17 different fraternities. They are all social fraternities. They are all different. They all embody their own values, their own traditions, their own history. And PANHEL is made up of seven sororities. These are the seven sororities that you will see if you choose to go through the formal recruitment process. This occurs in the spring and there are different academic requirements to get involved in this, which we will touch on later because all of the governing councils hold the same academic requirements. So going through formal recruitment in the spring, I have been through it multiple times. I went through it as a potential member as a rush as most people call it i went through it as a member of a sorority and i went through it as a rho gamma which is someone who disaffiliates from their sorority for the time being and acts as a mentor or someone that the girls going through the process can talk to and give them unbiased advice so the process is about four days long you're given a group and you're given a rho gamma and the first round you go around and you meet every sorority, which is really nice because even if you don't end up in a certain group, this gives you the chance to get to know other people who you may have not gotten to know. No. After each round, the, so the first round is the sisterhood round where you kind of just learn about the sorority. Then after this, you'll go back to your rogam and you will, there's a mutual selection process. So the girls will decide which sororities they're interested in being in, and the sororities will also take a look at all the girls going through recruitment and decide if they think it's a good fit. If there's a mutual agreement between the girl and the sorority, they're asked back to the next round, which is the philanthropy round, where they learn a little more about the sorority's philanthropy, get to spend a little more time with the girls, and then at the end of this round, the same mutual selection process. Then there's one more round, which is more of not an emotional round, but there's a lot of why did I choose this sorority and talking about what people have gone through as a member of a sorority. And at the end, you choose 
which sororities you would be open to getting a bid to. And the next day is bid day. It's a really fun day where you, the term for it is run home and you go and meet your sorority and get involved. And it's a really nice day. So the other five governing councils are the Multicultural Greek and Fraternal Council, the National APIDA Panhellenic Association Council, the National Association of Latino Fraternal Organizations Council, the National Panhellenic Council, which is not the same as Panhel, and those are our cultural ones. And then we have the Professional Fraternity Council, which is, as you can see, our professional ones. So what makes Binghamton Greek Life different than Greek Life at other universities? As I mentioned before, Binghamton Greek Life is only 8% of student life on campus. This makes a very big campus that could be overwhelming for incoming students seem a lot smaller. It gives you more of a sense of community within such a large, vibrant community and just kind of makes it a little more manageable. With that being said, that we do not have the nationally chartered houses that you see in movies and that you see at some larger campuses with the letters on the front, and we have no frat row. There's no street that's devoted to houses, but you are free to live with people in your sorority or fraternity. There are no regulations on who you could live with, who you cannot live with. I personally do live with a lot of girls in my sorority, which I love and I think has brought us a lot closer together. But I also have friends who do not live with us and we are just as close with her. So that's on housing with Greek life. All of our um, chapters are nationally chartered, which means they are backed by a national headquarters and there are chapters nationwide. Some schools do have local sororities and local fraternities, which means that they just have chapters in that area and not nationwide. All of our chapters are nationwide, which is nice because no matter where you go, you're bound to run into a sister or a brother. As I've mentioned before also, Binghamton Greek Life is very supportive and I have seen this time and time again throughout philanthropy events, throughout helping each other with schoolwork. And it's not a competitive thing ever. It's really just people want to see each other succeed. Something else that I think is important to touch upon, it's not what makes Binghamton different, but it is something that is found at Binghamton. There are unrecognized fraternities and sororities. This means that they are not backed by a national organization. They are not seen in the eyes of the campus community as a sorority or a fraternity, but they function in the same way that a sorority or a fraternity would. There are no rules or regulations set forth for them. They really do as they please, when they please, at, but I thought it was important to let everyone know that that is an option. It is not something that is promoted. It is not technically part of Greek life, but it is there. It's not really important to this, but it is something that it is good to know about. As I mentioned before, there are academic requirements to getting involved in Greek life. Students must have a 2.5 GPA at the time of joining a sorority or fraternity. You must also have 12 credit hours. So credit hours have to be obtained from a college or a university. It doesn't necessarily have to be Binghamton, but it cannot be a high school dual enrollment. It cannot be an AP or an IB exam. It has to be from the time you started attending college. If you are a transfer student choosing to rush, it can be transfer credits, but it cannot be from when you were in high school. Once you've been in the sorority or fraternity and been initiated, there are certain GPAs depending on chapter that you are supposed to maintain. Most organizations, if you do not maintain these, will put you on a sort of academic probation. This just means if you're in a social one, you may not be able to go out some nights 
or they have tutors that they want you to meet with within the sorority, people who have taken the class before and feel comfortable helping and assisting you to perform to the best of your ability. There might be a scholarship chair in place who just checks in with you to see your progress, monitors your progress, keeps track of your test scores throughout the semester until you get yourself off academic probation. So once you're in Greek life, there's a lot that it can do for you and help you grow as a person. I personally in high school, I was involved, but I was not the most involved. I was on a varsity sport team. I was in a couple clubs, but it would never have crossed my mind to run for a leadership position. I'm not the type of person who would want to take on such a responsibility. I was always nervous about that and messing up and ultimately failing at something like that. However, once I joined Binghamton Greek Life and became so close with the people in my chapter, I never saw this being a leader in the same way. I saw it as someone who could be there for the younger girls in my sorority and help them grow and prosper. I saw it as making a difference and making others proud. I never saw it in the lens of potentially failing. So with that being said, I was the assistant chair and then I was also the chair for the biggest philanthropy event ran by Greek Life. It's held in the event stadium. We sell out over a thousand tickets. People who aren't in Greek Life are excited to come to it. And we raise over $22,000 for our philanthropy, which is a really nice thing. I had to work with other chapters. I had to work with other organizations that were not Greek life. So I had to get in contact with the lighting people, with the stage people, with the music people, with the chair people, with the event center in general, and work with those people. I had to work with local businesses in Binghamton in order to get sponsors and prize baskets for the winner. There were a lot of moving parts to this and it was probably the biggest undertaking I've ever had. And I can say that I really did grow from that. And in addition to this, there are so many other leadership roles within sororities and fraternities. There is the executive board positions, which is the overseeing board of the sorority or fraternity. So the president, the social chair, the scholarship chair, the philanthropy chair, the standards person, all different people who oversee everything. And then there's also the general board, which is their assistants and people who would run the sorority Instagram, help plan little other events and just help the sorority in not as major of a way, but still an impactful way. Something I never saw myself doing, even after joining my sorority, was running for eboard. I never thought I'd be capable of winning a position. I never thought I'd want to get up in front of my sorority and make a speech explaining why I would like this position. However, this is something that I did. I didn't end up winning, but it really was a huge deal for me to even put myself out there and get up there and run. I did hold some G board positions though, so I still was involved. Next, although Binghamton does provide you with a ton, a ton, a ton of networking events and alumni connections, being involved in Greek life gives you more of an opportunity to do this. Being in Greek life gives you the opportunity to reach out to people who were older in your chapter. They might be able to help you get a job or an internship down the road. I know for us, one girl in my sorority wrote in our group chat, she's two years graduated at this point, but wrote, hey guys, my company's hiring for an HR position. Is anyone interested? I'd love to recommend you. And now my friend is going to leave college this May with a job because of this. And also, if you're interviewing for a job and the person interviewing you was in your organization, even at a different school, if they're between two applicants who are pretty much the same in terms of grades, experience, and all the stuff that people do look for, and they see that one person was involved in their, chat, in their organization and the other wasn't, they might be more obligated 
well, not obligated, but feel more inclined to pick the person who was involved in their organization, just because it kind of shows a little bit about who the person is, the values they uphold, and just their character. Another thing Binghamton Greek Life can do is get you a lot more involved with philanthropy than you ever thought you would be. For example of this, as I, well, I've mentioned a lot of philanthropy already, but there's one fraternity, even with them pretty much all being home right now, all in their different prospective houses, they have managed to raise $800 for coronavirus relief, that all the money will be going straight to hospitals, fire departments, and police offices in Binghamton. And they've paired up with local restaurants and local businesses to provide all these first responders with food and anything else they may need during this time, which I think is really great and shows a lot about Binghamton Greek life as a whole. We also do something called the Day of Service. This has been implemented for about three or four years where students are given the opportunity to pick a service that they're interested in. They're given a list of options and then there's like writing letters to veterans, working with elderly people at a nursing home, working at the animal shelter, cleaning up parks, and it's just the day that Binghamton students can go and do what they're interested in, meet students in other chapters that have similar interests, and give back to the Binghamton community as we do through for that. And because we are a big part of the Binghamton community and it's a great way to give back to them. There's another thing you can do is getting involved in other organizations on campus through being in Greek life. Every sorority and fraternity has some sort of group me or Facebook group where everyone can keep in touch and know what's going on. And people will write, hey guys, my business club is meeting today or my engineering club is meeting today if anyone's interested in joining. I personally was reached out to by a girl in my sorority who was the president of the Human Development Association. And she asked me if I'd be interested in running for the vice president of their organization because they were looking for someone. And I took on this opportunity. I was vice president for two years and this helped me grow outside of my sorority and meet more people within the human development department, which was really great. So being involved in a sorority in a fraternity or a sorority comes with some big requirements and commitments. There is a time commitment, but this varies based on chapter. This could be attending philanthropy events, attending chapter meetings, attending other sororities and fraternities events. But once you hit those minimums, you can be as involved or uninvolved as you choose to be. The other type of commitment is the financial commitment. Each group does require dues that go towards things like clothing, subsidizing events, bringing in guest speakers, bringing in food to chapter meetings or other events, paying for tickets to go to other philanthropy events, and a portion of it does go to the national organization in order to keep the organization up and running at their headquarters. Something else that I think is very important to touch upon is the difference between pledging and hazing. At Binghamton, we do not haze, and allegations of hazing are taken extremely seriously and can lead to chapters being removed from campus. Hazing is defined as any action taken or situation created involving prospective or new members of a group, or as a condition of continued membership in a group, which would be perceived by a reasonable person as likely to produce mental or physical harm, extreme or unusual stress, embarrassment, harassment, or ridicule. This is something that Binghamton does not tolerate, is taken very, very seriously. Something that is allowed is pledging. Pledging is given a bad stigma in society because it is often confused with hazing, but pledging is the process of getting to know the other people in your chapter getting to know the history of the organization, the traditions, and something that I really enjoyed going through. There's a lot of team building involved. There's just a lot of getting to know each other. And if you do want to pledge yourself to a lifelong 
sisterhood or brotherhood, it is important that you know the background of it and make sure it is something that you want to be a part of. To get involved in Greek life, you can just wait and show up to rush, or you can be a little proactive and kind of seek out Greek life in a way. In both the fall and the spring, Greek life hosts general interest meetings, which are where all the sorority, it's more so for sororities, the general interest meetings, but all the chapters come, they bring multiple people who are open to talking to you and telling you about what they've been up to, what they have coming up, the type of people in their chapter, what interests them, and learning about you. They all, everyone is always so welcoming and ready to learn about others. From this, you can also reach out to the recruitment chair, which is someone who's on the executive board, whose job is to find new members and find people that they think would be a great fit. That is something that both fraternities and sororities have, and someone who's a great person to reach out to if you're interested in learning more. Another way to learn more is through Facebook and Instagram pages. Nationwide, most chapters have an overarching Instagram page for the organization, and then chapters tend to have their own Instagram and Facebook pages as well. This way, parents and other people who are interested in seeing can see what's going on in the chapter. They usually post for people's birthday. They'll name a sister or a brother of them the month. It's, it's very nice to look at. And also, just talking to people that you know. It doesn't have to be Binghamton students in Greek life, but anyone that you could talk to that has been in Greek life will definitely let you know how great of an experience it is and what a great thing it is to be a part of. So now I want to talk a little about the other types of organizations we have at Binghamton. First, we have the Multicultural Greek and Fraternity Council. This is one of our cultural, sorority, cultural councils. This unites people with similar backgrounds and there's two fraternities and two sororities. Then we have APIDA, which it was established in order to display unity among Asian Greek letter organizations. It exists not only to represent a diversified union of Greek life, but also to promote the awareness of both Asian and Asian American and heritage on campus and throughout the community. So there they have two fraternities and four two fraternities and four sororities within their council. The next council is the National Association of Latino Fraternal Organizations. These are Latinx based organizations and they have two fraternities and five sororities. Our last cultural one is the National Panhellenic Council. This is different than the Panhell that we have been talking about. This is a coalition of the nine largest historical African-American Greek-lettered fraternities and sororities. They have four fraternities and one sorority. Finally, we have the Professional Fraternity Council, which is to unite students with similar career paths. This is not to say that all the other organizations on campus do not help you in your career paths, but these, this is a council devoted solely to helping you get from point A to point B in your career, helping you with networking, helping you with resume building. This is something that other chapters do as well, but it is not something that is mandatory to attend, mandatory to do, but it's something that chapters will do just to kind of help you but the professional fraternity council, this is their main thing is helping you within your career. So we have medical fraternities, we have dental fraternities, we have business fraternities, we have engineering. There are a ton more as well, but those are the main ones. There's nine co-ed groups and there's one sorority and one fraternity. Now I'm gonna have Byron tell us a little about his experience with Greek life. Okay, thanks, Alyssa. So um, that was very knowledgeable, folks, um, which she had to share with you. Um, I will tell you this. For me, growing up in New York City, I had no idea what a fraternity was. I mean, we just weren't thinking that way in Queens. Um, when we went away to college, we were going to join a fraternity. It just wasn't, some of us weren't even thinking about going to college, um, you know, depending on what your situation was. So I kind of stumbled into it showing up at a school. I didn't go to Binghamton. But um, I kind of stumbled into it when I got invited to a rush. And that is a night where, you know, the fraternity had invited people over to kind of learn more about them, get, you know, a, an eye view 
of exactly what goes on, you know, what they stand for. Um, as Alyssa was talking, there's different types of fraternities and organizations out there, a lot of cultural organizations. So this was more, you know, one that was tied to being a social fraternity. So in the fraternity, um, but before we get there, um, I decided, okay, I like what I'm seeing, you know, this is great, I'm in a new school, all my friends, and a lot of people are thinking when they leave their high school, um, you know, they're not gonna have their friends. Some of them are going to the same university, but some folks aren't, especially if you're going to a smaller school or your major isn't housed um, at a certain uh, university or college. So sometimes you go there because you're starting from scratch. And if you're there as a freshman, you're trying to make friends, but then you get invited to a rush, you go there, you learn about the organization, um, you decide to pledge um, if that's something that they do. And then when you're involved, um, you start to form a, a brotherhood with these folks if it's a fraternity. You start to form things. It's more than just, I would say, eating at a luncheon table with them or doing certain um, activities with them. I mean, if you're interested in doing community service, you build a bond. Or if, let's say, you know, when I went to school, this is years back, um, but, you know, you were low on funds, you know, you borrowed funds from another fraternity brother, you know, can I share your ramen noodle in the dorm room, you know? So you build um, a group of people that are going through the same thing as you, as being at this college, you're new there, you're all, some of you are working, some of you aren't working, uh, study habits are different. So it's almost like you're building a bond with people. Um, and I will tell you to this day, I am still tight with my fraternity brothers. As a matter of fact, we were on Zoom last night, them, their wives, you know, some of the kids running around in the background. But um, I've been to several weddings um, from these folks. So it's really building a bond and a friendship that will last. And as Alyssa alluded to, this connections. Um, certainly, um, I believe that if there was a job situation when I first got out of school and it was something that I and someone else was trying to get, I'm in the fraternity, I know that fraternity brother, um, someone else is trying to get that job, they're most likely going to hire me. They're most likely going to stick with me if I have the experience that they're looking for and, and I'm the caliber for the position. So you are building a network. It's not just punching in to school a lot of times and it's a group of people that sit in the classroom. Once you're done, you leave. I mean, you really have different things that you're doing throughout your time. Um, we did a soup kitchen um, where we went to a soup kitchen. We had things like that going on. Um, during the holidays and when people went home. We went to each other's family houses, believe it or not, especially it was the first year where my car broke down. It was funny, but wasn't. Um, and then, you know, one of the fraternity brothers that I had just rushed with and we got in the same time, I had no idea he lived near where I was. And, you know, I found that out. He's like, yep, no problem. I got you. That's another thing. You, you tend to try to take care of each other and try to be there for each other. And, and everything's different. There's different types of organizations, but my experience has been within the fraternity, you are adding siblings on. That's exactly what's happening. For the most part, in most fraternities I've been exposed to a, and I've seen, um, and you know, this isn't the first, um, you know, college campus I've been on, I've been on others, not only for my own educational purposes, but also working in admissions um, larger institutions. Uh, like Alyssa said, this is more of a medium-sized institution that we're talking about. So if you're interested in building that kind of network, not only to have someone to lean on, I mean, maybe your family isn't, you're not super close with your family, or they live far away, and now you're going to a new place, and you really are trying to build that connection quickly and have some folks to lean on. And actually, in most cases, um, you know, it may be on paper, here's the bylaws, um, you're going to be the historian, you're going to be the pledge master, you, everyone's going to have a role, but you are building cohesive relationships, or at least I did, um, where, you know, if you need anything or need to talk, it's really another sibling for you. So I would say it's a, it's a great thing if you're looking to add family members on for the long term um, and to help get you through, um, um, you know, school at the same time. Now, I will tell you, um, Alyssa, we had a few questions I'm going to throw out there. And then I'll also, you know, touch base on some things with some of these students should be doing at this point, because I'm sure we have admitted students on here, as well as prospects and things like that. But I have a few questions that I know that came up. And I want us to be able to kind of see if we can address these. Um, so one, of, one of the first ones that we have, um, is it possible to get any bids for any sororities? So it's possible, I'm not sure if this question is asking, is it possible to get more than one bid? At the end of Rush, you pick 
your top choice, you're left with at the last day, you cannot have more than two sororities. So you kind of say, I'd prefer sorority A over sorority B. And if sorority A says, we want you to, you end up in sorority A. If you say, I want sorority A and sorority B, and sorority A doesn't necessarily think it's the best fit, but sorority B does, you'll get a bid to sorority B. But if sorority A and sorority B both want you and you put sorority A first, you'll go with sorority A. There's no, on bid day, you have two envelopes and you're like, oh goodness, where do I go? But there is, and it is a very, very small percentage, the head of Greek life works his best to make sure everyone does get a bid, but there is a very small percentage that Greek life's not for them. And people do drop out of recruitment. It, it just doesn't click the way that it should. But for the most part, everyone who goes into recruitment leaves in a sorority. Perfect. Uh, what's the average price for dues? That really differs based on group, based on school. That really, I can't answer that. I can say personally, mine started off a little higher. And as I became older and went through college, it got lower. I don't think they're more than 400 at the highest for mine. But with that being said, there's a finance chair in place who, if you are struggling financially, will work with you to figure out either a payment plan or something else going on. Uh, no one in my chapter has ever been removed because they were unable to pay dues. Like, it's something that can be worked out. Absolutely. Uh, when does rushing occur? Spring semester? So... Formal rush is in the spring. It's about the second or third week in February. To sign up for it, it opens over winter break and you have until two days before to decide if you would like to sign up. If you sign up and decide it's not something you want to do, there is no, nothing is lost. You're not held accountable for anything. You can just decide not to go. But there is also fall recruitment. It's a lot more informal. This is not a guaranteed every year. It's based on the size of the chapters and it's only for sophomores and transfers. Most of, I think in my time at Binghamton, I've witnessed one fall rush. It's really not very common. Okay, and back to the, um, you mentioned $400. Um, someone's just confirming, how often were the payments of $400? It's once per semester, but I don't bank on, every group you go to saying $400. That's just my personal experience. It was 400 at its most. And being a senior, it's dropped down to the 200. It varies. My brother's involved in Greek life at Binghamton as well. I don't know how much his dues were, but I know his were a different amount than mine. Every chapter includes different things in its dues. So if one due one chapter's dues are significantly lower. They could be paying for other things out of pocket when the time comes. It really varies on chapter. Like, don't take my chapter's numbers as an overarching number for every group. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll piggyback on that. Those, those fees, um, they, they, they depend on the organization. And, you know, that's on the high end that she was talking about. And a lot of times, um, you know, I tell folks, you need to align yourself with the organization that you want to be a part of, whether it's just, you know, based on where their um, drive is going, their, their morale, overall what they stand for, when we start talking about the activities you want to be involved in, because, you know, the dues really go towards the organization and also to build the um, foundation or continue the foundation of that organization. So it's very important to make sure that when you are lining yourself up with whether it's fraternity or sorority, it's something that you're really interested in, you've done your homework and looked into it because then you will not worry about paying the dues. When I had to pay dues a um, little while back, um, it was not that much, but there are some organizations where it will not be that high. So it does vary. You have to check with each organization, um, like she said. Um, how often do people rush um, end up getting into a sorority or fraternity? So when they rush, I mean, like a people, I guess they're trying to find out, um, you know, if you do the rush, you do everything, are you pretty much getting in, you think, for the most part? I don't want to say you're 100% getting a bid somewhere, but it's very unlikely that you will not get a bid somewhere. 
I've being a Rokai, I Rogan, I'm sorry. I barely saw any of that happening. LC, who is the head of Greek life, works very, very, very hard to try and ensure that everyone does end up in a chapter. Okay. If you, this is an interesting question. Uh, if you pledge to a sorority, can you ever decide to leave? You can disaffiliate. That is something people choose to do. I love my sorority. I'm not going to disaffiliate, but people do disaffiliate. The only thing I would point out with disaffiliating is once you are initiated into one sorority, you cannot be initiated into another sorority. So if you don't think, let's say you join a sorority and you decide you're going to transfer somewhere else and they don't have your sorority there, if you are initiated into the sorority at the first school, you cannot rush again at the second school and join another sorority. Yeah, I think that's what I see happening often, but it is something important to note. Yeah, I think for Greek life, that's kind of like a standard that's out there. Uh, once you join one or rush, you're not supposed to um, engage. Because you learn all the secrets and the history and the traditions, and they don't want you now going and sharing that information with other people. Right. But you are allowed to disaffiliate. There's no one holding you hostage in a sorority saying, no, you can't leave. Okay. Um, if you receive a bid but decide you do not want to do Greek life, you can decline the bid, of course. You can decline the bid. You, there's a 24-hour period after a bid day where you get to decide if it's something you want. A, you may not necessarily end up with your first choice of a chapter, and you might decide, you know what, I don't want to be in this chapter. I don't want to be, I'd rather not be in Greek life than be a part of this organization. You can walk away then and rush again the next year. But you don't have to accept the bid. You can drop out at any point. You could drop out during recruitment. You could drop out during the pledging process. Once you're initiated, you can disaffiliate. There's no one saying you have to remain here against your will. Everyone at the end of the day wants you to be happy with your decision. Absolutely. Um, can you join a business sorority if you are not a business major? I want to say yes. I'm yes. not entirely sure. I, I, yeah, I was going to say with that, so depending on institutions, um, this, um, you know, it really is going to depend. Um, it's going to depend on a lot of things. Some institutions that are larger, they may have a business Greek affiliation in engineering. That was another question that came up in engineering Greek affiliation. Um, what we found is most students that we're talking about, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Alyssa, um, you will find business students in a sorority or in a fraternity here yeah. at Bigston. You will find engineering students um, here in a fraternity or sorority. You will find students that are interested in pharmacy and different types of majors um, here. When you start talking about societies like some school, I'll give an example, Alpha Eta Rho, which is more tied towards aviation, and that's a Greek society. Um, then you probably expect to see mostly aviation majors following suit in an organization like that. So depending on the institution, they could have specific organizations tied to not only a culture, but also a discipline, um, whether it's business, whether it's, um, you know, someone mentioned engineering, but that's not something that we're dealing with here. But you will have business students in these different organizations that we have on campus. It's not just a line for a business student, okay? Um, the membership fee was already talked about. That's kind of talking about dues again, so we won't go back into that. Um, so is it possible not to get into any sorority? So I'm assuming this person may be addressing if there's a bid that, um, you know, can you be left empty handed? It is possible, but as I said before, it's very, very, very slim. It really does not happen often. Like the head of Greek life works tirelessly to make sure that everyone ends up somewhere. He really does. That's um, a lot of credit for that. Some schools, if you don't get a bid, they kind of just say, I'm sorry. It happened, try again next year. But our Greek life really does work very hard to try and ensure everyone gets a bid somewhere. Okay. Um, I, 
I'll lean on you for this one, Alyssa, but I, from my understanding, it's usually impossible to do something like that, being in a professional and social sorority at the same time. I'm pretty sure you can't do that. Yeah, I think when it comes uh, to- it, it is possible. It's not something I've ever heard of happening because both do require a lot of your time and a lot of commitment that if you were to be a part, you wouldn't be able to give your full self to either. So I'm pretty sure it's the same type of thing as you can't leave one school and join a sorority at another school. You can't be a part of two organizations, even if they are in different governing councils. Okay. But if you wanted, if you were interested in joining a social one, there are also clubs on campus yeah. that address business, that address engineering, that you can still be involved and learn about how to get from point A to point B in a career. So you don't have to be in a professional fraternity to that's not your only opportunity to learn and network. And I'm glad you brought that up because for the folks who are asking about the business, the engineers, um, you know, or, or pre-med someone asked me about and you're looking to kind of build some sort of um, click, if you will, with these students that have the same ambitions as you. Keep in mind that Binghamton has over 450 clubs and organizations here. So if you're looking to link up into something that's tied towards a major and interest and it's not so-called Greek life um, that you're interested in a fraternity or sorority, look at those options too. You know, Greek life isn't going to be for everyone. I think we have about 10% of the students that may be involved in some sort of Greek life here at the university. But as Alyssa said, that's true. There are different clubs and organizations that you can bond with folks um, for the major that you're in. It may not be structured as much in the sense of having a brother or a sister, depending on if that's what you're looking for, that long-term commitment. But you can make it as close-knit as you need to within those other clubs and organizations. So that's very important to keep that in mind. Um, so some of the other things that I'll close up with here, um, I guess before I let you say any closing words you have, Alyssa, is for those folks who are on here, I know some of you are admitted students. You may be having questions about, um, well, I need to still talk to the admissions office. Um, I know May 1st is the deposit deadline. You know, there's a lot going on right now. So first thing is make sure you're, 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 you're taking care of yourself, your families, you know, you're breathing, you're exercising. I know a lot of students like to stay physically fit. Um, you know, make sure you're taking that all in stride. You, you don't want to overwhelm yourself with certain things. Um, we are here for you in the admissions office to answer questions. You can certainly reach us Zoom chat. We have those hours uh, from 8.30 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon. You can reach that right off our admissions website. We are answering phones even though Binghamton is closed. Uh, so if you are calling the office, those calls are routed. So if you have admissions questions, we certainly are still here to answer those. We are not closed uh, for business when it comes to that. For those students who are concerned about financial aid and they're not sure what's going on with that, certainly reach out to the financial aid office. They have Zoom hours from what I understand as well, as well as having uh, someone answering phones. But it's important for those admitted students to understand we're still moving forward as normal and there could be questions, concerns, anxiety. All admissions decisions should be out there. So if you're not sure if you've received your decision, please check your um, your, your, your checker, your status checker. But I mean, reach out to us because there's a lot going on in your homes right now. So we want to make sure if you have questions or concerns, we're guiding you through it. Um, maybe you dropped the ball and just said, you know what, two months ago, you, you had it, everything, you knew what you had to do, you knew what the checklist was. Now all of a sudden you're home, so you're forced to deal with it one way or the other. Um, what's my next step? if I've already been admitted. So reach out to us and let's help you. For those students who are juniors, sophomores, and even maybe there's a freshman um, online here and not sure what they should be doing. Um, I would tell you this is the time to research uh, institutions. Go online and look at institutions. A lot of us are having virtual events. Ask questions of the admissions counselors. Um, do virtual campus tours if you can, because a lot of folks you cannot visit. But this is the time to be doing your homework and planning for the future. I know there's folks out there asking about AP scores, IB scores, what's gonna happen with the SAT. This is certainly unprecedented waters that we've been in. So we've not dealt with this before. Um, so I would just tell you, it's very important to be looking at each institution for those that are admitted to find out what their next steps are. For us, 
We have no official wording on what's happening with the AP, um, you know, testing. Uh, IB, I heard something about testing not happening. So if you have those questions, reach out to us, but we do update a lot of this information, but we just wanna know, um, we just want you to know that we're here for you to answer those questions because there's a lot going on. Try to have a happy holiday this weekend. Uh, don't overwhelm yourself with everything that's going on. Take a break, but we will be here Monday if you have questions to reach out to us or email, email us. We'll be happy to uh, guide you to what the next steps are. And that goes for those students who are in the background for the prospects, prospective students. You probably feel like a lot was supposed to happen. We were supposed to be visiting schools, coming to visit, and you know, you're not gonna be seeing us, but we have some virtual events. Well, feel free to email any of us and we'll be happy to kind of still work with you uh, virtually if we, if we have to, okay? Alyssa, you have anything else to add? Just wanna thank you all so much for taking the time out of your day. I hope anyone celebrating any holidays this weekend is enjoying. And if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you so much for all coming. Take care, everyone. Have a great weekend. Bye.